Nice What's going you. on, Sean? Chilling. How are you guys doing? Good. Welcome to the show. It's a, it's amazing that uh, you know. Did you ever did you ever have a desire? Because before you did Hot Ones, you were a, a reporter, like you were right. a journalist, and you were doing interviews and everything. But did you ever have a desire to be like a host type, where it's this is my show? Yeah, I mean, I was a broadcast journalism major and grew up watching late night shows, Love Line, Howard Stern. So there was always a part of me that thought maybe I could do this mm -hmm. if ever I got the opportunity. But then, as you guys know, it's hard to get those opportunities. It's not like you just apply for that job. But uh backed into it by kind of just taking advantage of every little assignment somebody gave me and then it sort of ballooned into this thing so in a lot of ways like i have right now everything i've kind of wanted to have and work with people that are amazing so in some ways that's true definitely getting yeah. the opportunities is hard but the beauty is when i've gotten them i've failed so it's, like, <laughs> <laughs> it's always nice to make something out of it <laughs> right right that well that makes you feel better because you realize a lot of people stress about getting opportunities for you you know it doesn't matter if you get them or not no right. it doesn't right. matter so when it's I don't get there, it's not, look, this would have been done already anyway, it's two weeks. I would have already <laughs> fucked this up in the pilot. So how many how many things have you done before this? Because this is like so, so successful. Were there other ones yeah. you did that just didn't work? Uh, no, well, it's usually just sort of straight Q&A interview stuff, just packaging these digital interviews just over and over and over again, doing stuff for print, whether it's like digital or magazines or whatever. Um, but this definitely blew up. But it wasn't as, it wasn't like this straight out the gate big hit you know like our first couple of seasons it was really a struggle to get views and sometimes i was like wow i'm really yeah. eating a lot of spicy stuff for <laughs> for no reason <laughs> for no reason at all and it's probably Completely really insane. difficult to get, i mean now it's easy to get guests i would imagine because you're doing millions of views but right. when you're not doing millions of views and you're just you a guy people. you do yeah you basically have to trick people and uh you know, early on, that was the thing. We would just show up. If Complex is doing a cover shoot mm -hmm. with uh, with an artist like Tanache or something, we would just basically crash that uh, shoot and then say that we have this add-on. We, we have this show where we eat chicken wings during the interview. Would you be interested? And then we were able to get a lot of people to just fall in that way by just going behind other people doing things and collecting those crumbs and then just sort of making this show work. Uh, and it is a lot easier to book now, but there is that caveat of having to eat scorching hot chicken wings, which does turn some people off. It still stops some people? Yeah, I mean, 50 Cent, for example, that's somebody who I think was made in a laboratory exactly for <laughs> our show, uh -huh. and I can't get him to budge. You know, He doesn't want to do it, thing. or is it the wings he doesn't want to do? Um... It's, you know, whatever. It's muddy. You don't really know oh, yeah, that yeah. situation. But like him, for example, you know, but there's these white whales that we're always trying to catch. And yeah, even I think YouTube has a certain, you know, whatever. If you're an established star, maybe even think of that. Oh, I'd rather do Fallon or Colbert or something. Even it's like that. the podcast thing that people still are kind of attached, not realizing that YouTube shows and podcasts are doing the same eyeball numbers, if not better. Smoking. Yeah. Smoking some of those shows. Yeah. So, yeah, but I think that people are starting to understand that more and more, and then that has all happened as the show has blown up, so we've definitely benefited from that. So you you do, like, what, what's the pepper that they said you ate that's, like, the hottest pepper? The Carolina Reaper. That's the hottest one? Well, the, what's funny about these pepper guys is they're all, like, architects that are trying to make the tallest building, mm -hmm. and they're highly competitive, and they're all over the world, and they're all engineering these crazy peppers. So the Carolina Reaper pepper was the hottest pepper forever, and then some farmer in Wales did, like, the Dragon's Breath chili, and then the guy who grew the Carolina Reaper, who also grows Pepper X, which we have in our 10th hottest sauce, he basically had this war chest, and he was waiting for somebody to, like, dunk on him so he can dunk <clears> on him. <throat> Back. Oh, he was ready. Yeah, he was ready for it. And maybe he is for generations and generations to come. Like, who knows what's in the war chest? But it's the same with, like, all these guys. They're all, like, mad scientists. Well, can this guy actually eat the peppers that he makes? Yes, like a snack. Like, it's candy. Oh, he can, <laughs> He'll yeah. He'll just pop it up like it's popcorn, catch it in his mouth. Then how do they determine, how does science determine which one is a real, uh, the hottest pepper? Is it just reaction, or is there a way to actually tell? So there is a Scoville scale, which is a measure of capsation per unit or something. So they can actually quantify it on a scale like you would voltage or whatever else. So so for those that don't know, I mean, Hot Ones obviously is Sean's show that's on YouTube, and it's Sean, and he sits down with a celebrity, and they eat... 10 chicken wings that are progressively hotter and hotter as you know you do this like extremely well researched interview <laughs> you know that people are struggling to get through because by the time they get to wing number 6 or 7 everybody is uh, tearing up at the eyes and everything you though you come from this world like we said of journalism and reporting so the interview part 
was something that you were doing before you got here. But now, like Jim is asking you questions, you're kind of expected at this point to be an expert on hot wings as if that's the passion. But you were not a hot wings guy before. No, no. or even hot sauce. You know, right. it's not like I had this ability to eat super spicy food and then was like, this needs to be a show. Yeah, you know, right. that was never the thing. We were just trying to solve for a problem. Like celebrity interviews are boring. How do we make them not boring? or solve for that hot sauce. But that has definitely <laughs> happened, and we've seen the craft hot sauce thing explode because of the show in a lot of ways and going mainstream. And now I feel like every time you pass a fast food restaurant, you'll see some new spicy fries or spicy chicken yeah. thing. And so it's crazy. I always thought people would be more interested in the interviews and like what comes out sure. of it. And people just want to talk about hot sauce and wings and take me out for wings all the time. That's well, just what's happening. Can people, has anyone thrown up doing it? Yeah, we've we've run the gamut. We've had people spit in buckets, half pass out, sleep in the green room afterwards. Who slept um, in the green room? Coolio slept in the green room. <laughs> well, that may have been he might still be there. He the might may... still be there. I don't think that was the wings. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it was funny because we used to do the show actually a, like a block away on 50th Street, and it was in the middle of an office. So you'd always have people responding to emails and stuff, and then Riff Raff in a peach suit would like throw his shoulder <laughs> through the door. Make a sprint for the bathroom and I'd have people talk to me like I came out of the saw, stall and saw riffraff just dry heaving into the sink so those are the stories that oh always, it does make people sick yeah I what mean, do they drink milk milk water well that's like the uh, lifeline though right right ice right. cream people uh, tire banks brought ice cream we've had uh charlie theron delivered white rice to the suite that we were shooting in you know everybody has an anecdote gordon ramsay recently he stopped by bristol farms before the interview picked up lemon juice lime juice donuts Dude, everything the, the gordon ramsay one was great because gordon ramsay was the first and this is something that i think about when i'm watching the show and i haven't seen every single episode but i think gordon ramsay was one of the few that pointed out that the wing he was complaining about the wing itself right like not the sauce he was like there's no meat on this bone this is an awful chicken wing which is the most gordon ramsay thing he could do <laughs> <laughs> you know right and we expected that i had a lot of anxiety about it the night before you know but is he one of the this. was he before that one of those white whales yeah definitely yeah i mean right when we put up the first episode we had all the uh, in the comments for from episode one until we finally got him, the top comments would always be like, get Gordon Ramsay, get Gordon Ramsay, get Gordon Ramsay. And then that bled over into my real life. I'd just be walking <laughs> the streets. I'd be in an airport and people would be like, when's Gordon Ramsay? Hey, chicken wing guy. When's Gordon Ramsay going to be on the show? So I felt like there was an albatross around our neck forever. Yeah. And then we finally got him. And I think that he understood the same pressure because he was getting the same stuff. If he sent out a tweet, when are you going on hot ones, whatever. And eventually the whole world pressured us into that room. Well, you guys had to be happy with the way it came out. It did, it, I mean, I was looking at How it last night. Thir he, I he, think he did them he all. Did all. He, did yeah, them all. he did them all, and it's done 30 million views. Right. So, I mean, <laughs> it's really tough to say that it didn't succeed on every level, right? It did, and, you know, sometimes uh, we know a hit. You know, it's like a singer that goes into the booth and knows when they have a hit. Sometimes mm -hmm. we walk out of that room and we know that went well, and we knew there'd be ridiculous expectations for it, and we threw the kitchen sink at him, and he was such a good sport, and when we walked out, we're like, that was really good internet. How are the interviews, too? Like, cause I know you like to do the interviews, so like, do people tell you more, because sometimes celebrities are fucking weird with giving up information, they don't want to talk, oh, it was a fun project. Do you get more out of them because you're doing something else? I think that you're trapped on the show, and then every person who does press, whatever, they do the rounds, as you guys know, there's this PR-driven flight pattern that everyone's kind right. of in. And I think that the wings are disruptive and stimulating and then you're stuck on this show and you're probably not thinking about your guardrails when you're eating some of the hottest chicken wings in the history of the world. Um, but I, at the same time, I think that we're not even that kind of show. You know, like we're not really trying to sure. poke the bear all that much because... It's not a clickbait show. Really, right. I mean, what's great about the show is that there's less pressure on you to get something newsworthy because the headline is, watch this big celebrity eat these really hot wings. Yeah. Right, and right? I, think, I think the secret of our success has been in combining those things because you already have this ridiculous spectacle, super famous people eating scorching hot chicken wings on the internet, and then hopefully combining it with this career-spanning, thoughtful interview. When those two things go together, I think that's why the show has lasted now eight-plus seasons, how long it, episodes. How long in between each wing do people usually wait? It varies person to person. That's what's kind of crazy, too, because it's a revolving door of guests, and then everybody handles spicy food differently. If we all went out for curry after this, you know, Jim, you might get through it 
no problem, Sam. You might be sweating your face off. I might be puking in a garbage can next to me. So, you know, we have some guests come in and they're like, it just wasn't hot enough. And then some guests just be on like uh, death's door. So it runs, it's a big range. Did that pepper, when you ate that pepper, what did it do to you? It was like giving myself food poisoning for 12 hours. It was insane. <laughs> it was so stupid. And then I swore I'd never do it again. And then I did do it again with the same dude, Chili Klaus. But um, we, uh, I remember that first time I did it, I was like, something is seriously wrong. I went to a cab, stopped at a CVS, just bought a whole gallon of milk. And then I went on my couch, cranked the AC, put on some basketball shorts, and I would just be dumping the milk in my mouth and then just holding it in there till it was hot. And then I'd spit it out and would just do that for hours. So can it do anything really fucked up to you or is it just unpleasant? Uh, I can do something fucked up to you. I mean, sometimes I see these headlines because I, our fans always tag me in them. It's like, Wales man chokes on, uh, chokes on scorching hot pepper and scorches his lungs. You know, whatever. Like every oh, wow. bizarre... I'm just making that up, but every oh. bizarre. <laughs> I'm so stupid. Yeah, you and really gullible. got lost in the story. I'm 50, he could have said anything. <laughs> Genitals fall off. Oh, terrible! Oh, Spontaneously combusts on hot peppers. Troy, can you find that whales man? Out of my <laughs> asshole. I need to know more. You got to have him on the show. Um, so whatever. There, uh, there are some things. But I went to a doctor recently because I was somewhat worried. It was one of these things where I didn't want to go to the doctor because I'm like, they're going to tell me I have a hundred ulcers and that if I do one more show, I might die and right. then just take away my heat. You know, right. so I'm like, I'm going to strike while the iron's hot mode. I can't have a doctor doing that to me. So I guess I just avoided it forever. But finally, I was like, all right, I'm going to be a responsible adult. I'm going to go do this. They hooked me up to everything. I was like, every blood test, every scan, everything that you can do, you know. And they hooked me up. And then my doctor called me up. Totally clean bill of health. So oh my, my numbers God. are outstanding across the board. So maybe they're making me stronger, these wings. Now, do you go out of your way to eat healthy outside of this because you need to maintain yourself so that you can do this? Yeah. So I this mean, is a lifestyle at this point. It is. Yeah. And you have to think about that. And even the way the travel goes and whatever, I think you have to take care of yourself more. Uh, so people always think that I want to eat wings all the time. They want to take me out for wings. I'll go to this hot sauce expo and everyone's like, this is the devil's blood. You have to try it. <laughs> Everybody thinks that I'm just trying to up the ante every time I turn a corner. But when I'm not working, it's a lot of juice. It's a lot of cereal. It's a lot of just taking it easy. Yeah, I'm sure the last thing you want to eat is wings. It's all you eat. Who the no, fuck wants to never. eat them? If right. I'm off the clock, I don't want to eat wings. Let the record show. I like to put that out in the world. But people always, it's like me, they want to tell jokes to you. They're like, dude, try, th no, trust me. I right. know a hot wing. All right. Or you know comedians that'll bring a beer on stage or whatever, and then everyone wants to buy them shots? Yeah. It's like that. I have that existence. Well, they're secretly hoping for a meltdown. <laughs> That's why they buy the comic shots, because they're oh, hoping yeah. that you get drunk and fuck up, and it's a great, you know, they're, they're hoping for a Michael Richards set. <laughs> unless you're unless you're Burt Kreischer, and you just say yes every time. Every right. time. Buy you and drinks, then you and just then you go, it, okay, and then, okay, okay, yeah. okay, yeah, we're doing it, yeah. <laughs> That's a good Burt. <laughs> It really is, right? <laughs> yeah, but that's when, when drinking is a part of your thing, I guess it just doesn't affect you. And if you get drunk, it's like, all right, well, that's just Bert's, that's Bert's thing. That's Bert's thing. Yeah. Who, who got sick the fastest or who had the worst reaction to it? Well, Eddie Wong famously started in reverse order to just subvert the form. And that uh, was a mistake. That's cocky. That's that cocky. That's cocky. That is cocky. Yeah. It is cocky. <laughs> so he started at 10. So he was, that was a crazy shoot because it was like we fired up the cameras and usually it takes a while before people are like, Ooh, ah. And then you see the sort of step-by-step -step gradual uh, evolution towards that. But Eddie started with the first one, so it was like we fired up the cameras, introduced him, then he's eating the hottest camera, and all of a sudden he's doing laps around the studio asking where the bathroom <laughs> is, sweating his face off. You oh, know? wow. Yeah. That, so he thought that he tried to get it out of the way and then work your way into something yeah. a little easier. Yeah. I get like building the tolerance. Different. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it didn't work. It did not work at all. So what was the episode when you knew... We are really on to something. This isn't just a hobby. This isn't just a side thing. Like, this is going to be big. Right. Well, like I said in the beginning, you know, when it first started out, maybe we'd wake up, it would just have low view numbers. But the people who watched it liked it. That's how I knew if we get more people in the tent, this will be a big show We're because something, yeah. we keep the same people week over week over week who are like, this is going to explode. This is the best show. So that really fueled us early on. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the first episode that we ever did where we woke up in the morning and it was five million views, number one story trending, blah, 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 was when we had Key and Peel in. And that was just something that uh, worked, I guess. They were doing a uh, press for Keanu, I remember. We crashed the junket, shot with Key and Peel, put it out. And that was the first episode that just totally blew up and then helped us level up. And it's kind of just been a runaway train since then. It's amazing. Yeah. Do you have any, uh, and you, I'm not going to ask you for names, but do you have any, you said you know when it's like this is internet gold. Yeah. Do you have interviews that you've done and the whole thing's over and you've gone through all the wings and you're like, that was a dud. 
What yeah. are we going to do with this? I mean, it's happened a couple of times. A uh, couple of times, famously, if fans are thinking, like, if a fan was in here, they'd talk about the DJ Khaled episode mm-hmm. where he only ate two or three wings and then bowed out. You know, and you're like, uh, bowed like, out. He didn't do the interview, or he he left. He stayed there, but he's like, I'm not eating any more wings. And, uh, and you're like, DJ Khaled, like the whole point is so you could do your catchphrases and eat very hot wings. Right, and, and I knew Be right in your tracksuit. I knew right away that it was it was going to go that way because when he came in, he's holed up in the studio and he was just crushing slices of pizza. What? So I'm like, why is this guy eating pizza before we're about to eat 10 <laughs> Yeah, why? Is he, is he trying to coat his stomach? I don't know what the move was. I don't know if it was a strategy or if he was hungry or what. He just wanted some pizza. But then he bowed out. Uh, but to me, I really like that episode because it's such an outlier and it's so strange uh, from a viewing experience perspective than like every other episode. So I mean, it does say a lot about like it, but it I says a lot it. about DJ Khaled because most people try to come on and impress you and impress the audience <laughs> and want to be the ones that yeah. go far. DJ Khaled is so impressed with himself. He was like, that fuck he, all that. Yeah, he just doesn't see the need. <laughs> yeah. You know? yeah, which I almost respect, you know, which I almost respect. Yeah. Yeah. So you have to eat the whole wing or just part of it? It varies, you know. Are you strategizing? I'm how just you, curious. How you yeah. handle For something us, like this? Yeah, we're not like the Olympics. You know, I think that if we started putting strict rules on it and hitting people with like the house rules and then introducing them, and it would get like competitive and yeah, weird. Sure. And then like who weighs the who's the referee? That's like that's not enough of the wing to qualify. Yeah. So for us. And people are all different. Some people, you know, we've had guests that are 70 years old and stuff. Like, I wouldn't even feel good about them crushing. Who have you had on those 70? Jeff Goldblum, Al oh, Jeff Goldblum is... That's depressing. Jeff Goldblum is a young 70, though. That's crazy 70. that Jeff Goldblum is 70. 70. Yeah. Looks wow. Great for 70. He's a fascinating guy. Um, Sharp, too. Yeah. Yeah, so there's been... So, for us, whatever. If you take a bite... You take a bite. If you kill, if you clean the wing, the audience seems to respect that more. And yeah, some I mean, people I, I understand do. that. Yeah, yeah. And I, I do like the people who come in who don't know anything about the show and are just like, "I'm gonna crush all these chicken wings. I'm cleaning them all because they're taking it as a real challenge." Uh-huh. But if somebody comes in and they don't and they aren't like that and they're just giving the interview, biting and still struggling, you know, if you just take a bite out of that hot sauce, you'll really feel it. So, to us, it's not that important how much of the wings you don't care it's more the reaction and if they're trying to do it right i think that if somebody nibbles and they're like i'm cool i'm chill this is fine blah 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 it's not even hot then that to me is kind of lame but right if they're at least trying i'm cool with it. what is how what's an acceptable you said after three is no good what's an acceptable amount to get through where you're like all right this is a good interview even if he, he can't do anymore i to me it varies person to person so i think that if you commit and you try and you're into it if you bow out at six or seven or eight we had little yachty on the show and he'd never had hot sauce before in his entire life that's what he said (laughs) in the intro and he's like i want to be here today because i've never had hot sauce in my life and this is how i want to do it which i think like one of our commenters compared to trying to learn how to swim at niagara falls (laughs) (laughs) and so he went in and he actually made it to eight which is further than most people who bow out in the show do so to me that was an awesome performance by Lil Yachty. You know, you can't... Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, you can't mark him down it on that. It probably burns your lips. That fucking burn you get on your lips when you eat hot sauce. Oh. And imagine experiencing that for the first time on a show under camera lights in front of a crew, you know? With the hottest of hot wings, The right? hottest chicken wings in the world. Now, uh, when Lil Xan went to the hospital and said it was for <laughs> Flaming Cheetos... Uh, did you hear that story? I did he hear was that eating story. all the flaming Definitely Cheetos. Got tagged in that. And yeah. he went to the hospital. Are you going like this is not good for business? If people are going to the hospital for eating flaming Cheetos, what is this going to mean for wings? I immediately was like, this story's fake. You know, nobody <laughs> yeah. goes to the no, hospital for flaming hot Cheetos. And I think it's semi soft, right? Uh huh. A bag of flaming hot Cheetos. Not a big deal. I don't care where you're at. Mm-hmm. If that sends you to the hospital, that's no. on you, I feel like. Yeah, you just felt unpleasant and panicked. That's what that is. <laughs> you you think that's what that was? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a little tummy ache, and you're like, get a doctor. Plus, I your feel name's like... Lil Xan. Right. So, what? Xanax, cool, but... Flaming Hot Cheetos. Flaming Hot Cheetos, that's what puts you in the hospital? Part of me feels like he did not go to the hospital and Flaming Hot Cheetos <laughs> decided to pay for a, a story to break and that's everybody went with it. That's what I think. Yeah. Oh, you think that that was a, a thing think, by the company? Yeah, that was a that was, was a windowless room filled with cigar smoke <laughs> Illuminati situation. Yeah. Who's been the most competitive on the show? Like, who comes in and you're like, you don't, you need to relax. 
Because it's know, just me and you here. You don't need to be like this. Well, athletes all uh-huh, have yeah. the same mentality. Every time we have an athlete on, they always have that. Even Play if to we win. had, uh, I think next week's episode is Jimmy Butler. And even when he took the milk, he's like, how much milk? Do I drink? You know, they're very, <laughs> they're very serious about they don't the, break rules. the rules. Yeah. yeah. They're very serious about the rules. And then even you see it in their face. They're like four more. You know, it's like they're doing, they're in the weight room. It's mm-hmm. like, they're like one more set. There's a goal. There's a, there's a way to achieve the goal. There's a way to pace yourself. At the end. And there's a mentally a way to hack that, I guess, for them. Yeah. I'm not competitive. Like I just give up quickly. Like, you would. Like, if in man to man competition. You know what I mean? If I see the guy and he's bigger than yeah. me, I'm like, ah, congrats. I understand that. <laughs> you, you got this. <laughs> so if you're sitting there, you would be the DJ Khaled of this. If you're like, you know what? This isn't as pleasant yeah, Jim, as I how thought. How would you nah. approach it? I, I, would, I don't know. I mean, I would try to do more than three, but I don't know. I mean, uh, I but would. maybe not. No, and if I just puked, I puked. But I mean, I would prefer not to puke. Right. You but think would you'd you puke? Go it, it might happen. Throttle. Really? I don't know. Are you not good with spicy food? I don't know. I don't know if I am or not. I know I get a very sensitive stomach. I'm very bad on planes. I get motion sick. I won't eat sushi before I fly because I'm afraid of getting queasy. I in hate the being same queasy. way, in the same way that athletes are competitive, comedians are neurotic. Yeah, right. you're right. Uh huh. Right. That's how, that's what I've noticed with the wings. Now, would you try to do? You know, Jim and I. We won't spoil it for anybody. We we filmed a certain television show that takes place in a bar that needs help. Um, <laughs> recently, and we did have to work around the fact that Jim doesn't drink, so we had to we had to figure sure. something out. We told him when we arrived. By the you, way, we're doing a bar yeah, show. Yeah, yeah. I don't drink alcohol. <laughs> we didn't like, tell him. And the guy gets on the headset. Oh, fucking pussy. <laughs> we didn't tell him in advance. No. <laughs> <laughs> but do you? Uh, would you try to say like, look, you know, I'm kind of on a health kick right now. I don't really eat wings. Is there something else? No. Uh, yeah. Just maybe you, maybe do like a maybe like a deep fried cauliflower. Celery on the yeah. spices. <laughs> No, you got to do it to show it, but I don't know how many. I don't. I don't know. My stomach can be uh, at times very uh, tricky. It can. It can. Oh, yeah. I hate to hear that. Yeah, be <laughs> front of the bowl. <laughs> but would you go full throttle? Would you push yourself? Yeah, I would try. Limit? Of course, you know. I mean, I don't know how many I could do, but I would try. I wouldn't want to be lame. Yeah. It's like you don't want to be. But I'm not an athlete either. I, I say to the surprise of no one, <laughs> there's no reason to say that. But I wouldn't. I wouldn't be able to regiment right. it like I'm going to do six. I'm going to do eight. You know. Right. Those guys have the ability to push themselves beyond where I do. That's why they're athletes. <laughs> As successful as the show is, do you get like, are there any points where you get worried like, oh my God, like all they need to do is just get some guy who can ask questions and eat hot wings. They're going to replace me. Or do you realize, you know, the fans watch the show because I'm the host of the show. Like, do you have that confidence or are you like many of us that go, I'm very replaceable and they're going to figure this out soon? It's a little bit of both where I think that anybody that's doing something in entertainment, you always feel like you're going to lose it and never get it back. Um, but I also think this is my baby. I'm obsessed with the show and have been since the beginning. And I mean, that's pretty clear when you look at how it's like branded and how kind of big and beyond just a YouTube show it's gotten. Yeah. And yeah. I think that, you know, whatever, if somebody wants to eat these scorching hot chicken wings and commit to the show like I do and then make it a better show, then I would just tip my cap to that, but I don't think it would happen. I don't You'd th- pull I don't a Jim it. Norton I'm, and bow out? I, <laughs> <laughs> I just, yeah, I'd hand over the reins, but to me, whatever, I don't, I've had such a freakish drive with this show, and I've been with it since the beginning, mm-hmm. and I know it, and I know the audience, and the way that I spend almost like every waking hour, whether it's travel, whether it's research, whether it's doing the show, or in post, the way that I just helicopter parent this show, I, and the way that I've committed to it, and I do have confidence in myself as a host and interviewer. I, I don't, I'm not worried about, I wouldn't worry about that. I don't think anybody would make it a better show, honestly. What are you a fan of? Because you have you have athletes, musicians, actors, wrestlers, comedians. They've all done it. And every interview is heavily researched, like we right. just said. And they're all, none of it comes across like you're not informed about the person that's on and what it is that they do. But what kind of of those categories is, okay, we're in my wheelhouse. This is going to be, this is, this is a layup. Well, I think, that part of what's made this show work is that I I have a hobby with walking a mile in someone else's shoes. So to me, the process is a hobby and the hobby, you know, the it's both ways where I like if we're going to interview someone and I know a week in advance, I like that. I'll listen to their album. I'll read their book. I'll watch their shows. I'll listen to their stand up. I'll do whatever and totally immerse myself in that world for as much time as I have before the interview. And I actually enjoy that i would do that for free you know uh and did do the show for free for a long time but uh so to me that is whatever i'm into the process i like hanging out by pools when i'm in la 
I like going out. I like going. I like hanging out with my friends. I watch a lot of college football hype for the tournament. You know, I have those sorts of interests and hobbies. But to me, I just do love the process of the show. And then just being intellectually curious uh, has made the show. I think that that's what's made the interviews so authentic in that regard. What made you want to do journalism at all? Like, you know, I think about this sometimes, but I just started out by listening to the radio. So even when I was in junior high, I'd have tapes of Howard Stern. I'd listen to Loveline constantly. Every night I'd go home. I'd leave parties to go listen to Loveline. And I think part of me just wanted a radio show or wanted to be like those guys. My dad, he'd watch Letterman every night when my mom was out on uh out on work trips or whatever, I could like stay up late and watch Letterman with my dad and he would uh, explain the jokes to me every time the audience laughed. So I think that there was all that combined with, you know, that nature nurture mix. And I think that's why I pursued it. I wanted to do broadcast journalism because I wanted to make videos on campus and have it go towards my degree and then took off from there. What did your parents do? Uh, my mom was a paralegal. My dad's a judge. So, oh, wow. Wow. So when you... When this show starts, obviously, it's not the thing right. from the beginning. But when this starts to become the thing, how long did it take these people who have these high esteemed professions to right. process the fact that you're, the majority of their son's income is going to be coming in from <laughs> yeah. the Hot Wings show? Yeah. I, well, it's a weird thing because, you know, my dad doesn't watch YouTube. So to say I'm moving to New York to be on YouTube. Right. Because your dad's sitting there watching Letterman. You're like, I'm going to have my own show. He's saying, what channel is it on? And you're saying. The internet. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The computer. Look at Watch it on your phone, dad. <laughs> right. Watch, exactly. Right. You know, the thing that anybody can have a show on, I'm going to have a big show on that I'm going to have a show. <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, so he was just, a, it was a bit of a head scratcher maybe, but he was super supportive. And I think once we started getting people on that he knew, like Ricky Gervais, for example, mm -hmm. then he was like, oh, this is kind of cool and this is awesome. And then, you know, when I was on Colbert, because he was such a Letterman fan, to be in the Ed Sullivan Theater yes. and have Colbert spitting milk on the stage at the Ed Sullivan Theater, I think that was validating well, how, for me and him. And how crazy is that to not only, I mean, it's validating enough to be invited to be on Colbert's show, but he wants to do your bit on his show. Yeah, You're like we this is, we've created a monster here. This is it's to I think of it as ludicrous. It's completely ridiculous. You know, this dumb idea that we had to see it grow the way it has, and that was such a milestone for us. Mm -hmm. And then I remember just the way they have uh, a, a food artist displaying the wings and how it's so. You know, there that those shows are really like a Swiss Army night. You know, the way yeah. that everybody's working <laughs> together. It just it looks great. It's like a kitchen in a three star Michelin restaurant or something the way that everybody's moving around so even when they were laying out that table the way that the band was playing when you walk by and then we just walk to this table and eat scorching hot chicken wings on cbs <laughs> it was ridiculous it's insane is your father like a no-nonsense guy no he's got a good sense of humor and i think too i think when you're a judge i think it makes you because people are always like oh could you never get away with a lie blah 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 but i got away with like a million things sneak out of the house like whatever all the time uh, because I think maybe when that's your nine to five, maybe you kind of want to just go home and get your ass kicked by your kids and stuff. You know, you don't want to be regulating all the time. When you were a kid, like, are you like not worried about getting arrested because your dad's a judge? Uh, well, I think that I was just good at avoiding that detection. I think I was, I'm, I'm, I'm moving in the shadows or whatever. But the funny thing is that friends would call me all the time, you know, when they got like scooped up with yeah. something or they'd be like calling the house and be like hey can you ask your dad but kind of not say it's me you know in these roundabout like drinking yeah. tickets caught with weed or whatever they'd always call my house to ask for legal advice would he help <laughs> yeah he'd, he'd kind of be like uh, you know if, just casually yeah if little, he, if he little, knew the guy yeah yeah did you ever want to do law no never and uh my parents didn't seem to want me to either how come i don't know i they think they just realized that it was hard work and <laughs> probably isn't going to pay off so yeah, skip it they, they never they never pushed in any direction that way they were just kind of they were chill about it i wanted yeah. to be a lawyer a comedy first but then i was like yeah that's never going to happen so in high school i kind of wanted to be a lawyer after injustice for all you know <laughs> watching al pacino i'm like that's like a great job but you, you know what's it. ironic you graduating from law school probably has less of a chance of happening than having a career in stand-up. <laughs> yeah, you're probably right. Yeah, yeah that, that, that was pointed out to me quickly when I dropped out of high school. <laughs> you know how it is, rehab. <laughs> yeah, my parents, I mean, they were, it's, you want to think it's supportive, but I, I know, I looked on their face, when I got into Syracuse, the shock 
that was on the face of both of them. And they're, well, yeah, you got to go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Like they realized Syracuse is going to figure out that they made a horrible mistake here. <laughs> it's clerical error. We are, why would you get into this school? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And they, they sent me away. So it was probably the same thing. They were like, yeah, you know, this this law school thing, it's not it's not for you. Yeah. Or not, you know, you don't need to. Right. 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 So what did you do in journalism? Besides, I know you wrote for a, tra- was a travel. Uh... Yeah. So that was my job after I, uh, after I left, whatever, after I graduated college, I ended up working at this agency that did, it's not super interesting, but like out of market advertising for destinations. And I was in Chicago. So I worked for the Chicago tourism agency where we do, if you ever go on a subway and you'll see like visit Montana yeah. or whatever, and there's like a, a picture of a buffalo or something, <laughs> we would do that, but for Chicago. So I was doing that, but then on nights and weekends and basically all my free time, I was just doing freelance articles, like just keeping my eye of the tiger interviewing like local chefs or athletes whatever if somebody wanted to do a Derek Rose feature or whatever I might be like the local guy who would do that so right. I was just doing that doing that doing that ended up doing some stuff in New Orleans for All-Star Weekend where we had all these cool interviews lined up and it was right when Complex launched their YouTube channel so they were like hey can we just send cameras because we need to start uploading videos so can we put these interviews on camera and I didn't have any big dreams or anything I was like yeah that would be the coolest thing ever to just have a 2 chains interview on YouTube I yeah. thought I'd peek yeah. there and that would be the coolest thing that I did and then they I mean, liked it's still him pretty enough. cool it is cool yeah. <laughs> yeah. and then they liked him enough to offer me a full time job so I sold all my shit I quit my job left Chicago as a New York 30 days later and that was almost like five years ago to the day. So when you're writing wow. copy, you're a copy editor for these travel, but you, you have to get people interested in like one quick shot, right? Yeah. You have to write. So what do you write for Chicago that makes people go, fuck, I want to go there? Well, the key is to, <laughs> <laughs> the key is to just go to Millennium Park, take a picture of that bean thing, and then just be like, uh, you're home now or something, and then just put that in an airplane magazine, and then you're good to go. So, And you did something that they rejected? Where they were like, that's a terrible, no one's going to come here because of that? Yeah, but I, well, <laughs> what we used to do, I think, is... Uh, Chicago, they rioted. No, yeah. no it's not, not, not going to at all. <laughs> <laughs> I'd make whatever we do. Basically, what you do is you do like 10 different versions of the same thing and then throw them up there and then have somebody pick one. And then you feel like you have your bases covered. Okay, so you've done a little bit of everything. Yeah, yeah. I would just show the Willis Tower. I mean, the Sears Tower. That's just kind of what that I like was, about you. Look how tall this is. Yeah, that's fucking high, too. right? Yeah. I you love go those. To the top. Did you ever go to those windows with those things, those glass things where you look down? I can't do that. One of my earliest memories is going to the top of the Sears Tower back when it's called the Sears Tower and taking that view in. I do remember that, and I must have been like three or four years old at the time. But uh, I never went in any of those boxes. I don't think I have the stomach for that. Stomach for I, hot wings, not for that. I thought it would be fine. I went out because it's like it's a glass box. Like little kids go in there. Everybody does. And it wasn't until the minute you were there. It wasn't yeah, until yeah. the minute that I stepped in, and I like collapsed. Like I could not. Your knees started shaking. Dude, everything. And your stomach dropped. Everything. I had to hold on to everything around me. It was, but you it did was... step out. Yeah, I I did really quickly and then right back in. It was really embarrassing. You That's realize no how much it would suck to fall that far. I read something about a guy who jumped off the <laughs> I, I had actually figured that earlier that if no, I were I did, to fall but when you're the top, seeing it, it <laughs> when you're seeing it, it's like I had read something where a guy had jumped off one time and Chicago was so windy and it took him like 12 seconds oh. to fall because the wind was so horrible. Just try to think about something else on your way down. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was thinking of as I was sitting there looking down. That it would take like 12 seconds. That's yeah. crazy. I love Chicago. Yeah. It's such a great place. I don't know why I'm talking about suicide. You have a fun show. <laughs> Did you have uh... a... <laughs> Have you had anybody that's done the show, maybe even early on, that kind of complained about it after? Like, I didn't want to do it. Why? It's actually surprisingly, shockingly, usually a very positive experience. More so than anything else I've worked on. Mm-hmm. I think. I think people think celebrities might be, uh, oh, they're too whatever. They're gonna turn their nose up, or. But I think most of them are just normal people that are like, I'm killing these wings. They'll push their team back a little bit sometimes. And they're like, do you need water? And they're like, no, I'm in it. I got it. I got it. I got it. So even afterwards, and uh, what's crazy is it becomes this weird clubhouse where now even I'll have 
I'll still be in contact with people that have done the show. A lot of people, actually. So it, 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 I think it, you end up building it like a, like, it's like a buddy cop movie every episode. Isn't yeah, it yeah. amazing what you have to go through, too, to get to certain people? Like, entourages <laughs> are very funny to me. Like, you travel with one or two people. Some people literally walk around seven, nine people. Yeah. Makeup people, the trainer. And there's so many people to get through to get to that one person. And then when you're sitting with them, they're just like, yeah, just yeah, let's do it. Right. They're, they're usually easier to deal with. That's what I find, too. Even when we're trying to pitch people or whatever, sometimes I'll talk to somebody like, we've been trying to get you in here forever and they'll be like what are you talking about I, I, I've been wanting to do this show and you just realize there's gatekeepers that Isn't hold it, it up crazy it that, is crazy and, I mean you want to think and it never happens but you want I feel like if I found out something like that where a person was like I've been trying to do this forever and I go I have no idea I'd be furious at the gatekeeper right like right. I at least want to be able if it's a no let me say no I always think that about publicists I feel like that's like the most worthless job yeah, in this in this place, because if anything, the bad ones are automatic vibe killers. Yeah, you know. So I always that's I'm gonna pop on a publicist in this calendar year. I'm saying that. Right <laughs> <now>. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They, they, they can be very difficult because uh, they, they, there's a time where it's not reasonable what they're saying. Like, right. no, we just want to do that, and they're speaking for the artist, but it's like I know you're not representing that person, right? Right. You, they don't know we're even having this conversation. Yeah, yeah. And you'll be like, I host this show. Trust me, I know what people want to hear what they want to know and it's not anyone's goal to make anybody look bad yeah, isn't that weird when like a publicist won't realize no th the way this is gonna work is when we all look good and right. i'm gonna make them look good that's the whole reason they're here and it's all based on chemistry or whatever this is yeah. like the first time that we're meeting today and we have to create this fire sure. between us this right. chemistry between us and then when somebody comes in and just messes up the vibe it even messes with that so i'm like you know if you would have just stayed home this would have been so much better <laughs> yeah because they interfere when they necessarily should what, what, what do they do to you they start telling you like he doesn't want to talk about this or she doesn't want to talk about that or well don't usually, mention the divorce or whatever it is you know, we don't, whatever. If somebody also, has. Also, he doesn't like wings. <laughs> yeah, he has a sense of stomach. Yeah. Could you just interview him and then send him home? No. <laughs> yeah, I think that f with us, it, the guardrail thing usually isn't a major issue. And usually, if it's something about family or relationship or whatever, you should just respect it if you're going to yeah. have your guests sure. in anyway. Um, but the things that I'm thinking about is early on, especially, I remember one person came in and they were like, this isn't a phoner. What blah, blah, blah. <laughs> you know, like that. Uh, big star and they were they didn't even know they were going to be eating chicken wings that day they thought it was a phoner yeah they thought it was a phoner <laughs> fucking asshole and then and then, so uh, and we do our due diligence because we're always we always want people to know what the deal is you're eating scorching hot chicken wings because you know, otherwise you're that. gonna set the whole thing up they're gonna show up this isn't what i thought it was i'm leaving and then they dip right yeah and you're screwed have you right. had anybody dip uh i just no. used your term no. i've never said dip before you sounded really cool what and a young. shitty chameleon i am <laughs> <laughs> um, but then, and then too, she's walking in with hot ones too. We do this career spanning interview where the plugs up front, and the front plugs in the back. So we have it set up to where, you know, we have a lot of space to play and you'll always know that you'll hit your, sure. your talking point. And we deliver this big, long 25 minute interview to the world without commercials and everybody's happy. So, uh, but I remember she's walking around. She's like, why isn't, she, why isn't he talking about the movie? What is that? Uh, you know, like that. And I could hear her. Uh, and like, you know what I mean? It's just messing everything. It I doesn't mean, work God, that way. Thank God for that room right there and Travis in there being our gatekeeper. Because he tells us, and it's happened multiple times, where we're, we're having a conversation like this, right? Where we're not necessarily talking about the project. But within the conversation, our audience is becoming interested in you. And we're going we're gonna to mention why we're all here. But the publicist will be in there talking to Travis and going, yeah, they, they're not talking about the project. Are they going to bring up the project? They haven't mentioned the, yeah. Right. It's like, you stupid asshole. What do you think? Everybody wants to hear an actor go, yeah, the director was fun. Oh, that's fascinating. Yeah. Right. 15 more minutes of that, They're please. not talking about the children's Talk about book. the pranks you pulled on set, <laughs> fucking dickhead. The, the publicists are the worst. the worst. It is the worst. worst. The worst. Because they don't understand that, like, if people are interested in you, they'll be much more interested in what you're talking about of and course. what you're selling because they like you. Yeah. And part of you being interesting is just having a conversation or whatever it is. Exactly. Yeah. 100%. And the bad publicist really, a, ba a good publicist worst. stays out of the way. A bad publicist. Or sees the vision. Some of them are good. I'll, I'll say that. Some of them are good. Sure. Maybe they'll see the vision and understand that and know that and support that. And then some of them don't. I've had but this it, in the middle of an interview. Okay. You, you, they'll walk up and they'll go like, and they put the paper down. And it's like, what the fuck are you, would you do that if he was on Conan? <laughs> right. Would you walk out? Right, right. Uh, yeah. But good publicists, no. That most publicists are bad. So, like, they'll hear this conversation, and, and a good publicist will be right on, yeah. right on. Yeah. By the way, you brought me a gift. Thank you. 
What's the I gift? Did. I don't know. I, I didn't know. I brought you some it. t-shirts. I brought you some hot sauce. Oh, thank oh, you. That's very exciting. Yeah. I don't, I'll, I'll try it. Just take yeah, a swig. No, there. no, I can't. No, I have to fly. I'm not doing it before a plane. Smart. <laughs> yeah. It will actually get sick. Yeah, and nobody wants to be on a plane with yeah. those kinds of issues. You're already bad enough with your gut health on a plane. I know. As soon as we're done with this interview, farts. I am going to shit for 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to run upstairs and shit like an animal. Is there anybody that you've uh, had on, or maybe even haven't had on, but interacted with, where they will come up to you at this point and go like, they're not that they're just saying I'm a huge fan of the show, but you can tell they actually are. Like they have, they're citing references. They're talking about favorite episodes where you're going, holy shit, you're a fan of the show? Yeah, that happens all the time. And when it started to take off, you know, I'll always know because sometimes people walk in and I'm like, hi, I'm introduced. And people are like, I know who you are. I've seen every episode. Like T-Pain came in and he's like, um, episode 61. You know, he's, he's like seen every episode. It's funny that you brought up Bert earlier yeah. because uh, Bert was our first real famous fan who was tweeting out every episode. And Well, Bert's and like so great because no matter how famous he gets... He is, he's a fanboy. He's a fanboy. Before he's right. a comedian, before he's a famous guy, yeah. before he's he's a fanboy. Exactly. And he's the and it's the best. Right. So then we've had that whole thing. I'm trying to think of other Tom Segura. Yeah. You know, uh, I've been fortunate enough to keep a relationship with him going after this, and kind of a person I'd go to if I needed advice on something. So that's all been so awesome. Uh, yeah, it's amazing that yeah. you start to create networks, right? And it's crazy how the network just sort of like, it, I feel like it was just all underwater and then it just starts to float and then you just see how it's all connected. You're just here now. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So, so you want, 50 Cent is a guy you really want. Who else is somebody that you're dying to get on? Well, the fans, I feel like they've gone from Gordon Ramsay and then once we cross that off the list, have now brought out other names, you know, so I feel like I'm always just chasing that chasing my own tail, trying to uh, satisfy the audience. Right now, big names are Elon Musk or <laughs> The Rock or, you know, so those names that pop up all the time. I'm I like, bet The Rock right, would the Ro- You might get The Rock. Elon the Musk Rock after that it. pot smoking thing on Rogan. I don't see him doing anything else risky. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, I don't see Elon Musk doing a whole bunch of YouTube shows <laughs> yeah, yeah, anytime I think, soon. I think, yeah. Especially think if you were like, out. you know, we like, to, we like to smoke weed when we eat wings. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, me too. What's this? Like a marijuana cigarette? Yeah. But I, th- yeah, I bet Elon. he would take the joint, though. I bet he would still he would. take the joint. He still yeah. would. He wants to be cool. <laughs> yeah. he, he does. But I, I I, wouldn't be shocked to see The Rock pop up on that show. One time, uh, because we've been pursuing him forever, one time I got a note that was like, would Sean be open to eating grilled salmon strips? And I was like, we're close. Because that had to come out of his mouth. Yes. You know? So I feel like we've been close Well, a would you times. do it? Yeah. For, yeah. for the rock, yeah. I mean, if somebody comes on and they're vegetarian or whatever, we'll get vegan wings or. Do oh, you've whatever. done that before. Yeah, so we'll we'll meet people halfway on whatever dietary uh, thing they have. It's really about the sauce, so the vessel isn't that totally important. Grilled salmon strips will be just as hot as chicken yeah. wings. Yeah, grilled salmon strips soaked in hot sauce just as much, and then I guess you do that for the rock, you know. But for the rock, I would do say, it. Yeah, yeah. of course. Yeah, I, I've been obsessed with the rock's fucking Instagram. It's and, the best, <laughs> dude. Every Sunday he has a cheat meal and sushi. That's my goal in life. I want to eat sushi. You with see the, the rock. squats he was doing yesterday on Instagram? No. Oh my god. This, what? What do you mean? Just, it, just the way you said it. <laughs> you, it wasn't that kind of homoerotic? Yeah, it wasn't sure was. homoerotic. <laughs> really, just just see him doing sushi. squats. Just see his calves? No. <laughs> Well, sorry that I'm not watching his food porn. Oh, look at the meals he gets to have. Look at his cheat meals. I want to have uh, sushi with The Rock. Well, I want to do squats with The Rock. <laughs> you want to do, There's nothing wrong you with doing do squats, squats over The Rock. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, The Rock would be doing squats you over bet me. He would. Yeah, that's, that's how that would go. No, he had like a he had like a ton of weight on him and chains hanging down and everything. His calves were. I mean, look, whatever. You obviously. Prefer the sushi pit. Would you go to him? Would you go to the Iron Paradise and do it if you wanted to? What's the Iron yeah. Paradise? Oh, we should know if you're a fucking fan of The Rock. Whoa. Why are you being so hostile? Do you know what the Iron Paradise is? <laughs> I do not. That's his portable gym. That's oh. where he works out all the time. Is that where he brings it on set and everything? So yeah. like on the movie lot, he just dropped the Paradise on? They had that. I'm sure they build it for him wherever he goes. He has to have a gym, and he can't just go to the gym. He's The Rock, and probably he has very limited time to travel. Yeah, I would say if, if Mateo Lane can't go to uh, hotel gyms, right. The Rock probably has issues. He may have a play four in the morning before he shoots or, or 11 at night when he's done. Who knows? Whatever his schedule is, but he doesn't want to have to worry about that. He right. wants to just walk in, work out, and go. Yep. Yeah. You're just sucking up to The Rock because he watches comedy Netflix specials on his Instagram. I know he does, but the <laughs> bottom line is he, uh, he uh, I want to eat uh, dinner with him. I've never met him. You we, haven't? We've talked, no, but I've never met him. He's a, he is. It infuriates me, but he's a Jim Norton fan. Well, maybe we'll eat together. Absolutely. One day. 
Well, listen, uh, if anybody hasn't checked out uh, Hot Ones yet, I mean, I'm sure that you're aware of it. If not, it's on YouTube. First We Feast is the channel. But just look up Hot, Hot Ones. ones. Uh, well, is Shaq the newest one? Shaq is the newest one, and then we have Theo Vaughn coming out on oh, Thursday. Oh, Theo's great. Theo's great. Yeah. Yeah. It's a really good episode, so we're Theo's... hyped for that one. And then are there any, do you announce in advance any other guests for the season? Well, some, uh, I, it's just fans are kind of suffocating, so if they know a guest is coming down the line, then they'll just spam the current interview with like where is Theo oh, where, yeah. is I this? See. where is that I see but we got uh Theo Vaughn Jimmy Butler and then two more episodes in the season and then we'll start right back up again how long do you take a break between seasons like 20 minutes I mean <laughs> <laughs> you know like maybe 10 days uh yeah feed the beast right it's Just been keep... so crazy I mean that's you know we started this show a little over three years ago now we're eight seasons 150 like we're nailing every Thursday at 11 a.m. for basically Three, four years. And you straight. love you doing have, it though, so it's not like worry. Like it's, it's fun. Yeah, I mean, sometimes you get a little bit. You know, it starts to weigh on you know a sure. little bit because of all the travel, and then sometimes the way the show works. Uh, maybe we have a big bank where we've done a lot of interviews and mm -hmm. banked them. Maybe sometimes we got to catch up. So then sure. you just start stacking them all in a week, traveling all over the place. Do that people give you crazy. shit suggestions? Like, do you know how to get you to get the queen? Get the queen <laughs> if they want to do it. I have a hard time even looking at my Twitter. You know, but yeah, obviously the queen are just, yeah, just ludicrous requests all day, every day. Are you going to do a, a, a Wings restaurant? I mean that's the move, right? That is the move. I a, think. Chain, a chain, a chain of, of wing restaurants. That's that. W that's aspirational. Yeah, I yeah. would say hot ones, whatever, like fast food wings. Let's partner. That's it. So lay up. <laughs> I got I got all the connections. No problem. I go to Chipotle at least twice a week, so it should be fine. Okay, cool. I know fast what I'm doing. Casual. Yeah, you yeah. know. You're fast casual. That's <laughs> that is the term. Did you see NBC had this? I can't believe you just said fast casual. NBC had this reality show that lasted one season. I, I love where you're going with this. Did you, Travis and I, at to the, up to this point, I believe we're the only two that watched it. Three. Yes, it was America's Next Great Restaurant or whatever it was called. All these guys trying to make a restaurant. And they yes. had the Chipotle guy. Yes. And then what he would always say, whenever he made the rounds, because they're giving feedback, you know, mm -hmm. the judge is giving feedback, he'd always be like, have you tried a fast casual? <laughs> you know, all he knew was Chipotle. Yes. So all of his advice would be Chipotle related. <laughs> of course he would. He would just be like, have you tried serving this as a taco? Or you know, he would just, Every everything time. was, his only point of reference to everything is just what he'd done with Chipotle, and he was so <laughs> just laser focused. That was just what he knew. Why didn't the show, show work? I mean, the, I loved it. I they lasted I it the whole season. I thought it was a good show. I think the the final two. I mean, I remember Soul Daddy was the one that won, and I think that the restaurant lasted like twenty seconds. Nothing. Yeah, they opened oh, it, it down on the on the at, at the pier. They Chelsea opened one. Pier? Yeah, Chelsea okay. Pier here in New York. Yeah, it did. It lasted no time at all. Nobody was one interested. lunch service, and then it was Finished. folded. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. You'd think on that a show like that. Like, if it were a big show on Shark Tank, for example, even the businesses that fail succeed. Right. Like, they don't get a deal, but the show is so big that they still succeed as a business. But not one restaurant from that show <laughs> succeeded. Joey's no. Balls or whatever the meatball place <laughs> yeah, yeah, was Joey's called. Joey's Balls, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was, uh, that was... Yeah, that was the kiss of death being on that show. Yeah. Yeah. I wish I could find that show online or on DVD or it was something. It a classic. It was I, I did so watch good. every episode. It was good. All right, there's three of us, Travis. Doesn't that make you feel good? <laughs> it does. <laughs> hey, is this true, what, the, what Nick is saying in New York? Let's before we uh, go? find out. Nick in New York, what's going on? Uh, yeah, guys, thanks for having me on. Uh, Sean, I've heard that hot black coffee cuts heat better than milk. Have you ever heard that or tried that? I've never heard that. People always hit me with antidotes all the time. On paper, I don't know about that. You know, I mean, I'm sure that's true. And then if they put it through, whatever, scientists, yeah. I bet that's true on some level. But if I'm eating a scorching hot death wing, I'm not reaching for the coffee. Hot for the, coffee. For the hot Maybe coffee. the acidity does something. Does it have to be hot, Nick? Uh, that's what I had heard. The hotter, the better. Mm. I'll oh, give it a shot. I'm going to give Thank this you. a shot, and I will report back to you, sir. Uh, but even like water, right. they always say water Thank doesn't you. work, but, uh, psychologically there's something about ice water that I feel like helps me. And maybe they're just fucking with the person. Like, my, I got wings and hot, hot coffee. <laughs> <laughs> just to be dicks. You pour it all over yourself. Yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Seriously, if I throw it in my face, trust me, it helps. <laughs> this will be good. This will be good. Want more Jim and Sam? Catch up with full episodes and interviews from celebrity guests anytime on demand using the SiriusXM app.